name is Mary Spender. Welcome to today's episode. I'm not even going to bring up what's in the box. You're going to have to wait until tomorrow. But let's just get in to the show with a question. John asks, when are you going to do some duets and who would you like to duet with most given the chance? There is such a list. I would obviously prefer to duet with all, all these people on stage, live, night after night. But right now I will settle for uh, online collaborations, whether songs, whether interviews, whether just getting to know them a bit, bit better than I already do. So Joey Landreth, have already duetted with him on stage, which, is, which was amazing. So obviously we'd love to do that again, maybe with our own song. Ariel Posen, obviously. Helen Ebay, obviously. Paul Davids, obviously. Tora, obviously. I'm being dripped on so much <laughs> by ice. Um, who else would I like to? I'm missing loads of people. I would obviously like to duet with artists that I've just been a fan of for years. Katie Tunstall, John Mayer, obviously. Who else am I listening to? I'm listening to so many people, but let me know in the comments who you think you would like me to duet with, because I know that there is a whole range of artists out there that um, I would love to collaborate with, but I just don't know of yet. And you guys are my eyes and ears. So do let me know who you think I would blend nicely with. Obviously, Raina, Tony, Josh, Carson, like, definitely would we we almost had a show happening but 2020 and you know that will happen that will happen one day brandy carlisle brandy carlisle is someone i definitely want to interview and um i just think she's had such an interesting career and just still at the start of it and yet you know Grammy Award winner, multiple Grammy Award winner, um, and just a very important figure in Roots music. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below, but it's freezing, and yes, I have a hot water bottle while I sit outside, but um, yeah, let's move on. So now it is time to get our first guest tip of this daily show, and that of course comes from the almighty Corey Wong. Hey, what's up? This is Corey Wong. My one guitar tip is a pretty simple one and one that you might, I, I assume you've heard it if you've taken guitar lessons at all or if you've taken guitar seriously at all. I hope it's something you've heard and I hope it's something that you already do, but it's something I have to always tell people, practice with a metronome. That's it. It's very simple. So I'm going to give you one little exercise that I suggest as a warm-up. I haven't played yet today. So here's something I'll sometimes do as a warm-up. I'll play uh, eighth notes and then switch to 16th notes. So that way my hand gets used to changing subdivision and my focus can change subdivision as well, going back and forth. Now, if you'll notice, or if you're watching, you'll notice my right hand motor is the same motion the whole time. So my eighth notes are going to be all downstrokes and the 16ths are alternate picking. So I'll show you. It's like this, one and two and three E and a four E and a one and two and three E and a four E and a. And another way you can practice it is to keep it all alternate, but that way your hand is having to double the motion. Okay, so it's like this. And then eventually build up speed. If you don't have a metronome, I literally just type in metronome on Google and there's a metronome that shows up. Get yourself up to a higher speed. Work your way up there. I normally, if I'm practicing this sort of thing, I'll just bump it up two BPM every minute or so. And if I practice this for 10 minutes, great. I've gone through a, you know, a right hand exercise that really gets my timing together. And there's two sides of it. Focus on the execution with your guitar 
and your hands, but also the mental focus side, the awareness of landing right on the grid every time. So simple exercise, but it is very effective. I promise you, if you do this sort of thing, your timing and your execution and your playing overall will get much better. Peace. Also, I've, I haven't said this in a while. Have, have you been, have you been practicing? Have you been practicing your instrument? I have actually been practicing my guitar. I've been learning a few new songs, which I'm really, really excited to share with you. I'm coming up with arrangements, figuring some stuff out, learning new chords because of the songs. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to check in and make sure that you're still practicing. That's the whole point of this daily series. We are 13 days in now. So, um, you know, a few more to go, a few more to go, but just, uh, just, yeah, go, go pause me. I'll still be here. Yeah, all right. Okay, good practice. Oh yeah, um, now it's time for my favorite part of the show. It's time for me to read your guitar stories. Well, this one has caught my eye. This comes from Pepe. Hi, Mary. Thank you so much for everything you do on your channel. It is both entertaining and inspiring. Thank you. I wanted to share a Gibson Les Paul custom story of intrigue, mystery, and redemption. That's the bit that caught my eye. I played in a touring band in the, in the early 1990s and at the time was able to purchase a beautiful Les Paul custom in traditional black for $850. It was a 1987 model and had the fattest neck I had ever felt on a guitar. I loved it. The band eventually imploded and I moved back to Puerto Rico, during which time my guitar was stolen. I walked away from music driven by the disappointment of the band's breakup and the heartbreak of my guitar being stolen. I eventually married a wonderful woman and a fan of music, Carmen, who encouraged me to get involved with music again. I bought an inexpensive modern Fender Telly with dual humbuckers, which never gave me the satisfaction and inspiration of my Les Paul, but the price of Les Pauls was through the roof by 2005, and the guitar that I had bought for 850 was now in the $3,000 neighborhood for a used model. On a trip to Florida, my wife and I visited a music store. There was a gorgeous secondhand LP custom in the rare color of mahogany. It was a 2003 reissue of a 57, and it had that awesome fat neck I so loved. The price of $2,500, while very reasonable, was still way outside what I could afford or even justify. So after playing the guitar for a while, I handed it back to the salesman, thanked him, and went on about the store, looking at other things I could afford. After 20 minutes of browsing around, I decided I didn't really need anything, and as I was walking to the front of the store to meet my wife and bid my farewells, the salesman was standing there with a case in hand, which he handed me. While I was distracted browsing the store, my wife had paid for the guitar, and it was now formally mine. I literally cried of joy. She got it. She knew what the instrument meant to me. 15 years later, I have a robust guitar collection in the count of 17 instruments. My, how you've multiplied. <laughs> but that Les Paul is still my number one, and of course I called her Carmen. Here is a picture of it along with, with Daddy's little girl, Callie, a budding opera singer in her own right. I also included a picture of the original one that was stolen. Thank you, Mary, and cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you, Pepe. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so sorry that got stolen. I like the whole um, Stevie Ray Vaughan vibe you've got going on the strap there. <laughs> I thought it was going to be your daughter, but it was, it, it's your cat. <laughs> I thought you meant your actual daughter. <laughs> so your cat is a budding opera singer, eh? All right. Thanks, Pepe. Thank you so much for watching the show. You are going to have to wait until tomorrow to find out what is in this box. I have no idea what condition, the thing that is in the box, what's in the box, is. Um, we're, we're gonna find out together. However, it is time for Patreon of the day. So I'm gonna use the Google random number generator. 384, that is Ivo Klein Hoffmeyer. You are my Patreon of the day. To everyone else, <laughs> I hope I have built up some momentum for tomorrow's video by not showing you what is in this massive box.
but you can probably guess. You you know the theme of this channel by now, so so we will find out together. But um, yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe, please like this video, comment below with your favourite segment, and I will definitely see you tomorrow.